Good morning, everyone. It is a chilly, cloudy day in West Texas here. But I have come today to tour a cotton gin, something that I did not know existed before yesterday. So yesterday we got to see picking cotton and stripping cotton. And then they were put in either bales or modules in the field. And then the gin, where I'm at right now, comes and picks them up. So we are going to be following the flow of cotton today, seeing the whole ginning process. And you guys are coming along with me. Right now we're at the Slayton Co-op Gin. Pretty cool. It's kind of like coming to like a grain elevator is the vibe I kind of get. It's cool. It's also kind of chilly. I didn't know it could get cold in Texas, but it is. All right, so we're starting the ginning process at the very beginning here. It all starts with these module trucks. So they either hold those big long rectangles or the round bales here. So the truck has this like conveyor belt type of thing on it. So it rolls the rails or modules back and they roll along here like this. Now in this particular gin, they do not have an automatic uh, wrap cutter. So that's all done by hand. The wrap is cut off and then the wrap will be recycled. Oh, here we go. He's cutting it right now. Look at that. Then once the wrap is cut off, then it goes over here. This is when the cotton begins to be fluffed with these little wheels and then also started to be uh, dried. So so there's just a lot of hot air doing work and moving the cotton around, getting all fluffed up and ready to actually gin. So we're leaving the first building. Right now, all of the cotton is being blown across those tubes and into this building. All right, so in we come here. We've got a big burner here, and all of our cotton is coming through this dryer here. It is so warm. And the cotton is just zigzagging through and getting all dry. All right, so after being dried, then it comes to this cleaning machine and they're pretty much just using force to clean it. So the cotton is just getting slammed around in there and all the trash is falling out and going outside the gin and then it will be sold to composters. All right, so up here we have an air distributor and the lint is coming down. It's cleaned up there, then come down the distributor and then it's run through a whole bunch of saws and then tossed around and it's picking out the seeds. So the lint goes out the back, and then the seeds are dropped down there. Once the cotton has been dried and then ginned, it needs to be dried to be ginned, they try to clean it as gently as possible because the goal of the gin is to protect the quality of the fiber as best they can. Then, <laughs> humidity, moisture is reintroduced to it. So have this big humidifying system that's adding moisture back to the lint so it can be pressed into a bale over here. So the cotton is coming down and fed into here and it's being tramped until it reaches, uh, the bale will reach 500 pounds. Then it comes over here and it'll get bound up, drops, then it gets bagged and off it goes. Here we go, there's a bale coming out. That bale weighs 500 pounds.
And here's all the trash that comes out the other side. All the stuff that you don't want getting in your clothes. <laughs> uh, this stuff, uh, once this pile gets real full, will be hauled away with a front end loader and it'll be composted, used as cow feed, spread on a field's organic matter. But the real quality final product is this, your ginned cotton. It's so soft, very clean, pure, fluffy white ginned cotton. This is my souvenir to take home. As the cotton is being ginned and the seeds are separated out, they come over here and are loaded into trucks and hauled away. All right, so now we're moving in in our, uh, we're just kind of following the cotton here. So next in our stock, we are at this huge, when I say huge, I mean, I can't describe how massive this place is. Just uh, hundreds, hundreds of these enormous buildings. Okay, so after the cotton is ginned, gets loaded onto this truck, the truck just pulls right into this warehouse here and then a portable ramp gets put up against the back of the truck and then the forklift will just start unloading the bales so each of these bales are 500 pounds oh here's our here's our forklift guy right here and each warehouse number uh they're they're numbered by the building and then all the rows and then each bale has a specific number and then also a barcode. That barcode can trace this exact bale back to the field, like the producer. So when an order for cotton comes in, they are very specific about the grades that they want. So the shipper will come in and pick up that, say, specific bale and put it on the truck. So everything is super, super organized. They can tell you, uh, let's say I grew cotton and I wanted to know exactly where my bales were stored after they were ginned. They could come in, start scanning codes and tell me exactly which bales came from my field, which is so, so cool. Everything is way more organized than I expected it would be. This is much, much different from say, uh, hauling your corn into the co-op uh, because there it either gets stored in bins or literally just piles on the ground. So you wouldn't be able to trace my exact kernels of corn back to my farm. Um, but here you can know exactly which cotton is yours. I think that's awesome. So cotton is so fluffy, but this from the bale, it is packed in so tightly. I mean, this like hard as a rock, which I guess to fit 500 pounds of cotton and that's about uh, chest high to me. It's not very big, but it is so heavy. It is just packed in so tightly. These forklift operators are no joke. I thought I could move a forklift pretty fast. No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> nothing compared to these guys. I think they can unload a truck in under 15 minutes and have everything all stacked up. It is so, so impressive. Look at this. So in each of these buildings, all along the tops are these huge fire suppression systems. So I learned that fire it's a very, very bad four-letter word that starts with F around here. <laughs> Do not say the word fire too loud. Uh, that's what I, when we first visited, the first cotton picker, first cotton baler <sighs> that we visited, I said, is cotton pretty flammable? He gave me the dirtiest look. He said, don't you ever say that. I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. So each of these, fire is a huge problem. Cotton is super, super flammable. So each of these warehouses have huge fire suppression systems in them. So in peak season, when cotton is being picked and stripped just you know, as much as they possibly can, as much as moisture allows, the gin and the warehouse are operating 24 seven. They do not shut down except for some kind of breakdown. Uh, the gin especially, I mean, that place is just 
pumping through cotton as fast as they possibly can. So it's about four months, I think they said is peak season, where, oh my goodness, that poor gin manager, we, I was going to go speak to him, but he was so busy. They broke down at like 1 a.m. And so he'd been up at the gin from one until when, whenever we showed up and he was, the poor guy was just trying to get a nap on the couch, feel bad for him. Uh, these places are incredible. This is an industry that, I mean, I knew existed. I mean, my, my shirt and sweatshirt have to come from somewhere, uh, but I just had no idea the scale that an industry like this operate, operates at. It's, it's crazy. Um, so I, this is just kind of a dream come true for me, not only to be able to farm and film uh, corn and soybean production in the middle of Nebraska, but to be able to travel around to places like Texas and see cotton. I mean, this is something that I've, I don't know. This is just a dream come true. This is super cool. And then to be able to share all my experiences and what I'm learning with, with you, I, we get to learn it together. I just, I think that's awesome. I just really want to thank you guys because these kind of opportunities come around because I have you guys. So just appreciate you guys watching. I hope that you were able to learn something from me following cotton from the field to the warehouse where it'll be exported eventually and where so many products come from, uh, from our shirts to money to mattresses and makeup and all sorts of crazy things. So thank you for following along. I hope you learned something because I certainly did. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who made this Texas trip possible. Eco Drip Irrigation, <laughs> they set this whole thing up and they have just been in crazy contact with so many producers and warehouse managers and gin operators. They took us out for lunch and dinner and drove us all around Tarnation in Texas. And I just want to give them the biggest shout out. They have been the nicest people and the easiest people to work with. So if you need drip irrigation or agronomist services or fertilizer, all sorts of things, Eco Drip is where you need to look. Thank you guys. We sending a big love from Nebraska. Well, 2000 miles later, here we are back at Nebraska, the good life. Such an incredible trip. I want to thank everyone who made it possible, especially the people at EcoDrip um, and you guys for watching the videos. Couldn't do this stuff without you. Back to Nebraska. Who knows what we're going to be doing next? Probably some field work, I think. So stay tuned for those videos. So I guess I kind of forgot. Grant isn't even done with harvest yet. <laughs> It's been, it actually snowed while we were gone in Nebraska, so they haven't done any harvest since. So we gotta go help with that. So I guess I'll be doing field work and Grant will be in the combine again. 